Hey everybody, it's Gordon Majak here, back with another episode of Timeless Pop, Rock, and Soul. And oh, today I have got a tasty little morsel for you guys. Before I get to that, please remember to like, subscribe, comment below. Let's talk about this groovy 70s soul train that we are riding. Oh, 70s soul train? Groovy? Yeah, I remember about a week or so ago, I asked you guys the musical question, is there anything groovier than 70s soul? And of course, the only answer, the correct answer is no, hell no, there's nothing as groovy as 70s soul. And I proved it to you. I gave you a little shot of the Cornelius Brothers and Sister Rose doing It's Too Late to Turn Back Now from 1972. And then I bounced back to 1970 for one of my all-time personal top 10 favorite records, the great Diana Ross doing Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Well, today I'm going to hit you with another one, okay? Here's what we're talking about. Al Wilson, show and tell. Mm, mm, mm. This song came out in October of 1973 when I was 15 years old. And by January of 1974, Al Wilson had taken this song, show and tell, all the way to the top. Number one, baby. Two million copies sold. Okay, now, why is that so crazy? Why is that such a remarkable achievement? Well, I'll tell you. You want to know what the musical landscape, what the environment was like on the soul music scene in 1973? Let me give you a little abbreviated list of just a handful of the artists who were doing major business in the soul R&B genre in 1973. This will give you an idea of what Al was up against when he released this song. How about Tower of Power, Sly and the Family Stone, Aretha Franklin, Al Green, Donny Hathaway, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes with Teddy Pendergrass out front, Marvin Gaye, The Spinners, Stevie Wonder, The Stylistics, The OJs, and that great Philly soul sound, okay? That's just a, a short list of artists, and yet all of those artists, and obviously many more, were dominating the charts in 1973. All of those artists I named had big years in 1973. Pretty damn competitive environment to be working in, you might say, okay? And we're not even talking about all the other pop and rock artists that were having great hits as well, right? Look, 1973, we are talking right in the wheelhouse of one of the prime eras across all of the genres, okay? If I was to tell you everything that was happening in 73, I mean, we'd be here all damn day, okay? Suffice to say, it was a very competitive musical marketplace in 1973. There were so many great artists, great songs, great albums, great performances. I don't know how we kept up with all of them back then. And into the middle of that fray came Al Wilson, who was an unknown for the most part, an unknown artist. Al uh, had released a few records prior to, in the years prior to show and tell, but for all intents and purposes, Al Wilson was a one hit wonder, and this was his one hit. He was an unknown, okay? The song was written by a professional songwriter who had had some success prior to this. Jerry Fuller had written a couple hits on the pop music side for Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. Uh, but this was a little bit different vibe for him as well, crossing over into the soul arena. And Al Wilson, as I said, was an unknown. But boy, these brothers pulled everything together for this song. And you're going to hear it here in a second. Now, there's a couple things I want you guys to pay attention to here as we get into the song. First of all, listen to this beautiful laid back melodic bass and how that just pushes the whole groove along. Number two, you've got these funky congas that are just locked in step with that bass to keep that rhythm just percolating for the whole song. 
And then number three, of course, on the top end of the arrangement, you've got these gorgeous female background vocals and the little call and response thing that they do with the lead vocals. Just breathtaking, beautiful vocals on the background vocals in this song. Now, this song, like so many others, I keep saying it, it has a great moment in pop history right in the middle of it. Great moment in pop history? What does that mean, class? That's when a song goes from here, great song, fantastic, to what did they just do? Okay, there's one of those moments in this song right in the middle. I will stop it and warn you right before we get to it. Pay attention. Here we go from the fall of 1973, number one in 1974, Al Wilson, Show and Tell. Nice bass. for a second here so the video doesn't get blocked. Now I'm warning you, great moment in pop history, dead ahead. You may want to duck and cover or turn up the damn volume. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you. But here it comes. Now the first two verses and chorus of this song, Al Wilson stays in this nice, beautiful, laid back, medium range. He's just stating his case to his girl <laughs> and laying it all out there for her, right? But listen to what he does to take it from here to here, literally. Listen to Al Wilson, professional singer. <laughs> Yeah. 
I don't care if Al Wilson was a one-hit wonder. Makes no damn difference to me at all. The fact of the matter is that brother took this song, laid down a stellar vocal performance, and then when he needed to close the deal and bring it home in that middle section, he delivered. That's a professional singer. They know how to evolve their vocal and how to grow their vocal throughout the course of the song. So then it, when it gets to that money moment, <laughs> yeah, they put it right over the top. And Al Wilson did it. An absolute classic, iconic, legendary song. And that is how Al Wilson took that record all the way to number one and sold two million copies despite being up against some of the greatest artists in pop, rock, and soul music history. Al Wilson, doing it all the way to the top. Next song, next video, oh yeah, we're gonna hit this 70s soul train one more time. We're going into some Philly soul, one of my favorite artists too. I can't wait to get to it for you. Coming right back. Stick with me. It's coming right up. <laughs> 